People are going to look at this title and wonder, what the fuck am I talking about? Now, trust me, the blueprint videos are like an excellent book. The title makes you wonder what the fuck you're about to witness. <laughs> and for those who say they only read adult magazines for pictures and shit, well, you have some video footage in the background for your viewing pleasure in this motherfucker. Anyway, I know I'm continuing to delay the inevitable, but trust me, the next video is actually going to name the kill streaks I would use. But I already know what would happen if I named all the kill streaks without doing this video. If I named them all, the cries of, oh, it's overpowered and all this shit would come crying down. I'm like, oh, fuck that bullshit. But trust me, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Now, what these assholes at Call of Duty should have done is placed all the kill streaks into four categories that you can choose from. The categories would be surveillance, airstrikes, user controlled vehicles, and computer controlled vehicles. And these categories are going to be very important to pay attention to because they'll control a number of factors that I'm going to discuss. The vehicle rewards, such as AC 130, chopper gunner, pave low, all that shit, everything will be a 10 point kill streak. Nothing higher than a 10 point kill streak, nothing lower. Now, in Modern Warfare 3, Infinity Ward rolled out strike packages with support, assault, and specialists like that. And like I already mentioned, the specialist package belongs in its own game mode, so that's not in this motherfucker. It's all fun and all, but it has more in common with Treyarch's gun game than it does with actual kill streaks. But what I would do is I would bring back the support system, but not in the way Modern Warfare 3 had it. Oh, fuck that shit, man. First of all, when you die, you lose all your points, man. Fuck all that shit. No more of this never-ending kill streak points where you can earn an EMP because you farted around long enough to kill a motherfucker. Hell no, not a chance. What should happen with the support system is two things. One, every objective you play should earn more points towards your next reward than it would if you normally use, like, say, the assault system or something like that. So here's an example. Say you're using the support system and I have the assault one, you know, with lethal shit and whatnot, and we both capture a flag at the exact same time. I would get 100 points, something like that, and you, using the support system, would get 150 or 200 or whatever the fuck it is because your role is to support the team. Kills will remain the same regardless. I get a kill, you get a kill, 100 points, 50 points, whatever the fuck, that will remain the same. But your objective points will receive a slight increase if you have a support system. The second thing that will occur is that all your support towards teammates will be tracked through their kills and whatnot. However, when your teammates are getting kills from your UAVs and counter UAVs and all that shit, all those points are not added up towards your score streak like we have in Black Ops 2. They would be added to that game ending scoring formula that fucking Einstein himself can't figure out. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what the fuck, man? Has anyone been able to figure out what the fuck that end game score shit is, man? But in the future, it will be something a lot fucking easy. But anyway, selecting support role will add more points to that bitch at the end of the game. Not your end game shit, but your end game shit. By choosing the support system, your hard work will be rewarded at the end of the match because you were the team player. You were the one who looked out for the team, and the team players have gone unnoticed far too long in this game. You know, I would even go so far as to include that match XP in the final leaderboard, just to show how much your contributions help the team during the course of the game. Those are a few changes I would make with the support system. But right now, Black Ops give points towards your next reward when you call in a UAV and other people get killed. Now to me, that's total bullshit, man. Your teammate does something on the other side of the map that you may or may not have affected, and you get points towards your next kill streak? Oh, hell no, man. So you mean to tell me you could be sneaking up into a room, you're gonna shoot somebody right in the back, but at that point, your teammate calls in a UAV, you shoot the motherfucker, and he gets points because he called in the UAV and you happen to kill somebody? Get the fuck out of here, man. Reward the points at the end of the game for using the support system. That's it. Reward them with ranking up quicker, adding points to their total for being a team player, but don't compound the issue with kill streaks by letting teammates earn rewards for you. None of that bullshit, man. Now keep in mind, I haven't mentioned the kill streaks as of yet, but what I will say is all the items in the support section are 100% non-lethal. UAVs, counter UAVs, shit like that. No more fucking stealth bombers or turrets in the support system, which was bullshit in Modern Warfare 3. Fuck all that shit, man. Now I mentioned the assault system that we had in Modern Warfare 3, but I would split that motherfucker into two groups, and those who paid attention to the title can probably figure out what they are. <laughs> First up is traditional, and you may wonder why I call it traditional. Do you guys remember a quaint little game, oh say, six years ago called Call of Duty 4? Do you remember the kill streaks? They were 357, UAV, airstrike, and a chopper. Well, guess what? That shit worked all those years ago, but this time, I'm upgrading the motherfucker. In the traditional system, you can only select one item from surveillance, one item from airstrikes, and one item from the computer controlled kill streaks. Not the user controlled, only computer controlled. Now, within each group, 
you have yeah. options in the surveillance group. It's not just a UAV. You'll have counter UAVs, advanced UAVs, SAM terrorists, among some other things of my geniusness. Airstrikes will have the usual shit, predator missiles, precision strikes, and whatnot. And the computer control vehicles will be things like payloads and Harriers. You know, things that the computer is in charge of where you just run around and continue to act as normal. The main thing behind this is people will not have the ability to have only select vehicles like before. Remember Modern Warfare 2? Harrier Payable AC-130 or Modern Warfare 3 with the Chopper AH-6 and Osprey Gunner. Black Ops 2 has that Fart Hog or whatever the fuck you call that motherfucker, the Lodestar and the VTOL Wardship. No more bullshit where people could get three vehicles at one time. This is a return to the glory days of simplicity, but now with more options. In the traditional system, the airstrikes would continue to count towards your final kill streak, but at the reduced point rate we have in Black Ops 2. When you hit the final kill streak, it all resets back to the beginning of the kill streak cycle. And for the sake of not having to explain this shit in the comment section, if your airstrike gets your final kill streak and gets some additional points after that, we'll count that towards the beginning of your next streak. That way, your high level airstrikes and whatnot are not cheated out of potential points. The idea here is a return to the basics we enjoyed. It's a return to what made Call of Duty 4 great, but adds a modern twist to the elements we receive. Your computer controlled vehicles should not count towards your next cycle you earn. No more of this Black Ops bullshit where you can have a never ending cycle of shit that just keeps coming out because your points keep racking up. Fuck all that bullshit. When you hit your final kill streak, you will then start the process all over again from scratch. The final system is called Killer. And in this system, you have one option and one option only. That is the 10 point user controlled kill streak. The vehicles that you control some kind of targeting mechanism over like an AC-130. There will be no UAV for you. There will be no airstrike for you or any other vehicle to help you with your quest. You have one item, so you better make that motherfucker count. And as if I didn't piss in your Wheaties enough with this system, I have one more drop of pee I need to squeeze out. <laughs> as I previously mentioned in my perk videos, that blind eye would no longer be needed in the game I would create. Why on earth would I do something that fucking crazy? Because it's a simple solution. Vehicle kill streaks, whether it's computer controlled or user controlled, will only target enemies when they show up on the radar. Holy shit, did I just divide by zero in this motherfucker? <laughs> no, check it out, man. Every time you entered an AC-130 or a chopper gunner, you automatically saw that red box for everyone that didn't have the blind eye perk. Why does it immediately recognize enemies? How come you can enter and automatically the icons pop up identifying your enemies? Not anymore. Without a UAV running, everyone has inherent blind eye. Without a UAV type running, nobody will show up as a red dot. And one step further, a counter UAV will prevent vehicles from seeing enemies. Your major air support that you want, whether it's a user controlled or computer controlled, will now depend on the radar more than ever. Something these two asshole developers never fucking thought of in six goddamn years. If someone fires an unsilenced gun, they will show up on radar. And if you happen to be in an AC-130 and they shoot their gun, you will see the motherfucker. If someone gets marked by Hunter, they will show up on the radar. But under all normal circumstances, nobody will appear in the vehicle target finder without the enemy doing something to be detected. If you want your computer vehicle to kill someone, you will need some form of surveillance going, whether it's yours or a teammates, doesn't matter which one. Sure, people can hop in a chopper gun and start spraying and praying like a blind man in an orgy, but that doesn't mean they're gonna hit shit. And with this killer setup design without a radar helping them, you now depend on your teammates more than ever. You now have to hope a teammate helps you out to get kills. Now, I know people will say the traditional method is just as easy. You get 10 kill streak and then you earn another three to earn a radar. But you have to remember, you still need to earn the 10 first and then get another three. And that's if you select the three kill streak. If not, oh well, you're just gonna have to wait until you get one. <laughs> and hope the enemy doesn't shoot that bitch out of the sky and throw up a counter UAV. The biggest incentive that I would add to this system over the traditional system is the amount of time the vehicle could be in the air for and how hard it'll be to take it down. Now, I think in the AC-130 now it gets like 40 seconds or some shit like that or 45, whatever the fuck. I would extend that to a minute. Then I would shorten the amount of time a computer controlled vehicle is in the air. Maybe it'll 45 seconds or so. I don't know. It'll be one way or another. The user control will last longer than the computer control. I would make the killer vehicle stand out a little bit more because it's going to be a lot harder to kill motherfuckers without that goddamn UAV running. I also know that people will complain about the numbers being so low getting vehicles at 10. Now you gotta remember, we had this shit in Modern Warfare 2. You also have to remember, you need some surveillance for the motherfucker to work. You still need airspace to be clear before you launch your shit. You can't just go out and roll out three AC-130s. That shit is not going to work. And with that satellite attack that I mentioned, the thing that's going to be taken over for EMPs plus the counter UAVs and a few other items I would add, the effectiveness of getting these items is going to diminish if people do not play as a team. You're at the mercy of your team to help you now. 
you're at the mercy of enemies figuring out how to counter you. Basically, kill streaks have now become the ultimate chess piece. If you're not coordinating with your team on loadouts, you're basically screwing yourself over. Think about it. Six people with AC-130s is not going to work. Six people without a UAV is just going to fuck themselves over. The idea behind these are simple. Objective players will continue to be rewarded as highly in the point total as possible. Kill whores, who basically play this game to pad their stats, inflate KDRs and kill numbers and whatnot, will have a harder time doing that without the help of their team. If you want higher numbers and kills, using your gun is going to be the most effective tool again. That's something Call of Duty hasn't had in a long time. And that's something that made it successful six years ago. Call of Duty basically became a game dependent on killstreak rewards for kills instead of actually winning gunfights. Anyways, the video you are all waiting for is finally coming up next. What killstreaks should Call of Duty use in this motherfucker? Now again, the items in these four categories will be revealed because I got some unique shit from this game that will top anything Infinity Ward and Treyarch have ever brought to their games. Anyway, as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. And like I said, very next video, we're going to get into the killstreaks in this motherfucker.